episode of Mad as a Dope. Firstly, I would like to apologise for the lull in the uploads. Uh, I had a few issues with computers and also my camera. See, I bought a Panasonic camera. Not smart. Should have stayed with the JVC, but luckily I got one now. We're all good. Anyway, and you know, you'd think Panasonic, a multi-billion dollar brand that's, you know, worldwide, would at least be able to make a reasonably priced camera that lasts longer than a year. But then you'd be living in a world that's fair, where the rich don't get every chance they can to make as much money as possible, no matter how much it fucks everyone else up. I mean, think of the global financial crisis. What kind of shit is this? Now, just think about the the concept of the bailout. Now, a bunch of people who were shit at their jobs, kept their jobs, and then were bailed out as well. No, that doesn't sound fair, does it? That sounds like a load of shit when you consider that um, if you or I, let's say you're at your job and you cost the company $300 expense, do you think you're going to have a job? Maybe. Do you think you're going to get yelled at by your boss? Hell yeah. Do you think that you may even get demoted or may even have to pay the money back out of your own wallet? Yeah, of course. But these guys, none of them had to pay a cent. No one lost their jobs. No one even got fucking demoted. I'm pretty sure most of the people who were involved in fucking it up in the first place by giving shares to people who were just basically irresponsible with money and just absolutely fucking pieces of shit, just greedy motherfuckers. Like, you know that guy, I can't remember this cunt's name, but he, he's this big guy, he does all these timeshares all over America, and they even made a um, documentary called The Queen of Versailles, which is about him and his wife building the biggest house in America. You know, I watched that, and it was entertaining. Very entertaining to see what running after money and being greedy and just taking as much as you can off everyone else and making sure you get all of it does to someone. You know what it does? It makes them hollow. Now, you watch an old, you know, family video and you see your dad and your parents or whoever and they're all around with the kids and we're talking and we're enjoying life. We don't have much, but we love what we have. And that's very wholesome, isn't it? But inside their house, yeah, we've got marble everything. We've got 50 pools. We've got all this fucking unnecessary shit and we've taken as much as we can for ourselves and given fuck all back and we even fucking rape the middle class man to make our millions. No love. None. Zero. Watch that motherfucking film and see the love. There's none. They have no fucking substance. All they care about is having the biggest, the best, and the most money. Motherfuckers, I hate people like that. You know, it's all good to make enough to survive, and I don't care about the middle class man who's scraping by on each paycheck, or the guy who's got, you know, he's got some nice stuff, but he didn't buy a billion dollar house because it's unnecessary. What is this obsession with having the biggest and the best? Who are you trying to impress? To be honest, I really couldn't care less if you live in a trailer or if you live in a billion dollar house. I ain't judging that. You know, we're all different. None of us are perfect. Myself, I live in commission housing, which is housing funded by the government. You know, it's cheap rent and shit. Some people call it ghetto. Some people call it shitty. Some people call it scummy. I call it somewhere to live. Okay, this is my home, and I don't give a fuck if it's not up to your standards of opulence. Oh, I'm sorry I don't have these massive pillars at my front door with a massive, you know, half-circle driveway thing with a fountain in the middle and a fucking chandelier coming down for no fucking apparent reason. I mean, come on, for Christ's sake. Do we need this shit? These guys, this Queen of Versailles, right, they're, they're so sad and they're so upset. The turmoil in the film, the sad moment is when the global financial crisis hits and they can't build their hundred billion dollar house. Oh, how sad, boo-hoo, my fucking heart bleeds for you, you greedy fucks. You got exactly what you deserve. Your fucking husband is scum shit. And I'm glad I don't remember that motherfucker's name because, oh, God, the temptation to hunt him down and just go, fuck you, you greedy shit. I hope you die with nothing. He deserves nothing. You know what his job is? Selling overpriced holiday homes to people. That's what it is, timeshares. We're going to take as much money as we can from you 
for as little cost as humanly possible. Just like Panasonic did to stupid fucks like me with their video cameras. We're gonna charge you 300 bucks and you're gonna get a piece of shit. Fuck you. We're taking as much as we can and running to the bank. Well, fuck your bank. I don't care about that. It's so sad. And I love these people who go on and on and on and on about, oh, we can't fix world hunger. We're always going to have homeless. <coughs> because of you. Because of you, you greedy fuck. If we all shared an equal amount, oh, communism, uh, not quite. If we all just kept everything the same, but shared an equal amount amongst everyone, gave everyone enough to live in a commission house. This is enough, man. This is plenty of house, okay? It's not massive. I don't have, you know, one acre of land because I don't need it. I'm a human. I just need a roof, a bed, somewhere to eat, somewhere to shit, somewhere to clean, somewhere to chill. You know, that's all you need. I don't need 15 rooms, 5 is enough, it's fine, okay, that's plenty for a human. If we all shared it like that, if we all lived under 25,000 a year, okay, like in my household we live at about 25,000 a year, you know, go up to 30, you want to live a bit more comfortable, 30 is pretty nice, I can agree with that, we all get $30,000 a year, and that's what you live off. Firstly, the prices of things would come down, which would make, you know, you could live a li even a little bit higher than you're at now if we all shared equally because the reason people charge big dollars is because they want to get as much as they can. An iPhone isn't worth $1,000. It's not worth $1,100. But we need to maximise profits because if we aren't the richest company in the world, people won't buy our stuff. I buy... I have the iPhone. I bought it. And I didn't buy it from Apple. I bought it secondhand because... Your prices are crazy, you greedy shits. I bought it second hand, and it's a good phone. And that's why I wanted it. I didn't want it because you're a multi-billion dollar company. When they say that shit, when companies like, when the WWE said, oh, we've got to uh, uh, make it public, and we're going to maximise profits, and do all this shit, it became the dribbling shits. When they were just doing it to compete with someone else, just to say look, we're making better wrestling, that's when it was good. I don't care if you're an indie company. I don't care about your production. ECW was one of the, you know, one of the biggest wrestling companies and was out of a bingo hall. You know why people watched it? Because it was good. We didn't care that it wasn't worth a billion dollars. We didn't care that you had to get it on, like, traded videotapes. It was good because... It was. It just was. That was its intention. Its intention wasn't to make the most or be the biggest. It was just to be awesome. This is wrestling from a wrestling fan, so I know you'll enjoy it because I did. And that was their motivation. Look at the Grateful Dead. You're not going to see them on the Billboard charts. You're not going to see them in the Hall of Fame next to another big band. They'll be glossed over even though they're there. <laughs> the stoner hippies. You know why they had a cult following? Because they just made music that was good. They didn't do it to, you know, go after a market audience. They just made music. I mean, what kind of band would go from psychedelic rock to bluegrass and then to funk and then to gospel and then to a fucking R&B album? You know, a little bit of everything. We're just making music that we like and we hope others like it. And they did and still do. I mean, they started in 1965 and people still talk about the Grateful Dead today like they're a brand new band starting up. Why? Because they just make music that's good. They're not there to make millions of dollars. You know, people think that there's great quotes from the guys from KISS. We made music to get bitches and make money. Not in that words. I'm, you know, putting a little bit more of a gangster slant on the thing. Because... <laughs> Why well, even quote them properly? To me, they're just fucking scum. You, you're just fucking assholes. I love music. I love music. You can... Just music you can feel. Where someone just gave a shit about making the music they were making. And we're just doing it, just going for it, just, you know, I don't care, it might not be on the top of the charts, but I like it, and look, you get great music, it's that simple, you know, the biggest hits of all time didn't happen because they had to be on the top of the charts, the Beatles, you know, we're just, we're just a band, we're just, gonna, we're gonna play songs, oh, you, you're used to the revolver sound, well, here's Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club band, deal with it, and people did, and they loved it, just like they did with the Grateful Dead, when people stick to a formula of just trying to make the most, it fucks off. That's why the guys from One Direction gave up on that shit. They realised it was just hollow money grabbing shit, and they had enough of it. Yeah, it's good for a couple of minutes, but when you realise you're selling out your soul for money, you go, oh, 
I could be doing something that I actually enjoy instead of just running after other people's aspirations. And that's the main point I wanted to get to. All this money grabbing and all this crap, it isn't to please yourself. That's why the richest people in the world, some of the biggest celebrities, kill themselves. Because, yeah, I ran after everything and I got as much as I could, but no one likes me. I don't have any people who actually like me. They like that I'm an actor. They like that I'm an entrepreneur. They don't like me. That's why a lot of these famous people don't like to talk to the public, understandably. I want to be liked for me. I don't want to be liked because I got millions and you saw me on TV. Completely hollow. I feel sorry for them in a sense. When you run after just dollars and trying to impress others and live up to their standards, you lose who you are. You might be a weirdo like me, you might not, you might be cool and chill, you might be this, you might be that, you might be whatever, it doesn't matter, just show me who you are, I don't care about your dollars. And you shouldn't care about impressing other people who care about that sort of thing. If they don't like you because you live in crappy housing, or you live in a bad area, or you don't have the freshest clothes, or you're black, or you're white, or you're from a religious thing, or whatever, I don't hate you because of that, I'm disappointed. Because you just show me you. What do you, what, what, what do you think? I don't care about your money or any of that. And don't live up to anyone else. Live up to yourself. What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to see? Think about it. Maybe, you, maybe I'm wrong and everyone just cares about money. And that's all that matters. Making sure that other people think you're successful. But don't be successful to yourself. Don't use your brain. Critical thinking is dangerous. Just follow. Follow the money. Follow the Kardashians and these dickheads of the world. She's not really a dickhead, she's genius. Think about it. Kim Kardashian figured it out. All I gotta do to make a lot of money and become someone who just keeps generating money by existing is fuck a famous person because it worked for Paris Hilton and wow, was she right. Think about that. That Ray J, that guy was famous. He was the notable one when that video was made. No one gave a fuck about her until that was made, and then she became the chick that fucked the famous guy, and now she's the famous chick. Whoa. That's pretty genius now that I think about it. <laughs> Makes you think. Maybe you're the idiots. She's the genius. She got it. And that's how easy it is. But if we all shared it equally, you wouldn't get suckered in like that. You wouldn't have these unfair schemes. You wouldn't have prejudice. You wouldn't have any of that. It's not needed. Unnecessary. Like all these fucking, fucking rich cunts who just take as much as they can. And just fuck the poor because they're poor. Fuck you. Fuck you. That was mad as a goat. A little rusty coming back. I admit. Another video tomorrow, hopefully. We'll see.